Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning and especially uh, welcome Terry Twist to a, a, diff a somewhat different seat. She'll be our guest pastor this morning, so we thank her for that. And we have a few, a few brief announcements. Um, again, thank you to Terry. And Pastor Heidi will be back from vacation early this week. Uh, we'd like to thank Jan and Lee Wynn and their family for the flowers on the altar in memory of their, of, uh, their mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother, Jeanette, Shannon. And with that, uh, we'd like to enjoy a prelude by Carol. Thank you, Carol. Please join in this morning's call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Clap your hands, all you peoples. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome. And let's now begin our opening hymn, um, Stand as you're able, for joyful, joyful, we adore thee, number 89 in the hymnal and it'll also be projected on the screen.
Let us say together in unison the opening prayer found in your bulletins. Risen and ascended Christ, you surround us with your witnesses and send the counselor who opens our minds to understanding your teaching. Bless us with such grace that our lives become a blessing for the world now and in the age to come. Amen. This morning's epistle lesson is from Ephesians, first chapter 15 through 23rd verses. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called. The riches of this glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for those who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. Our reading from the New Testament lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Here ends the reading of the, of the Acts of the Apostles. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise, number 312 in your hymnal or on the screen. And Diane's going to come and help us lead. I guess it's not a familiar hymn, so she'll help us through it. Yeah. 
his church below. lesson today is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. This is concerning um, Jesus' last appearance with his disciples after the resurrection. Jesus said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of the Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Beth Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. The word of the Lord. May his blessing be upon it and upon our understanding of it. Today we are celebrating a feast day. It is the Feast of the Ascension, which follows 40 days after the resurrection or Easter. May 9th was the official day the Christian church celebrated the Ascension of the Lord, but we transfer it to a Sunday. It is not something that we talk about in the Christian church, and yet it is a very decisive, important moment. It is critical to the post-resurrection story of Jesus. Daryl Black, in his commentary of Luke, writes, in a real sense, Luke ends at the beginning. No longer is the story about what Jesus did in his earthly ministry, now it is a saga of what he continued to do through God's people, whom he equipped to perform a task and carry a message. This event is important to us because it completes the circle of Jesus' life. Luke tells us of the virgin birth, of the angel's proclamation that God has become incarnate in a baby soon to be born. The Gospels tell of Jesus' life of miraculous healings, the feeding of the 5,000, the walking on water, and the stilling of the wind and water. They tell of the mountaintop experience of the transfiguration and the raising of Lazarus from the dead. They tell us of Jesus' teachings and his daring to cross religious and social norms so that all God's people could experience and touch the love of God. The Gospels tell us of Jesus' death upon a cross, that he died to pay the price for our sin. And they tell of his resurrection, rising to new life, and eating and talking with his disciples, allowing them to touch the wounds of the nails and the spears. The ascension is the necessary ending to the new beginning. I think it's funny that believing what I just recounted to you, that we would have a hard time believing and talking about the ascension. Can you imagine the ending of the story if Jesus just visit, visits, just petered out? You know, like right after the resurrection, they saw Jesus every day, but as the weeks went on, the visits became less and less, and then all of a sudden, he just didn't come anymore. His presence was no longer available or felt. What's the phrase, the popular phrase? Jesus just left the building. <laughs> so much of our faith is about the mystery and the majesty and the power of God. The ascension is about that as well. I want to talk to you for a minute about the disciples. After Jesus' death and resurrection and his appearances to them, it seemed evident that something changed. They were no longer huddled masses of flesh, hiding in fear of their own shadow, 
Throughout the appearances of Jesus, Jesus continued to open their hearts and the minds of the disciples to the scriptures, revealing to his disciples that Jesus was the Messiah, the fulfillment of God's promise that was recorded in all the sacred texts, the laws, the prophets, and the writings. So much so that Luke tells us in Acts that the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel to Israel? They knew the scriptures and they knew that the Messiah would come and bring the kingdom on earth. And now they knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Once Jesus has opened up their minds to the scripture, he opens up their hearts to the things that they have witnessed. And he gives his ministry over to the disciples, saying that the repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. Jesus gave his disciples orders to stay in Jerusalem until you have been clothed with power on high. And he led them to Bethany. There he blessed them, sanctified them, and was carried up into heaven. The disciples went from a band of common men who followed a rabbi preaching the kingdom of God, giving up their livelihood and home, all in but not always understanding Jesus, needing him to clarify, explain his teachings and his actions, to becoming witnesses, martyrs, willing to preach and minister to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus at all costs. They were able to do that because they knew that wherever they were, that Jesus was accessible to them. He left as he promised that he would go to the Father, but they would not be alone. So what does that mean for all of us today, for you and me? It means the same for us as it did for the disciples. It means that because of Jesus, we are forever changed, that Jesus is always and everywhere accessible to us, that as the disciples were sent to preach repentance and forgiveness, so are we. And it means that we are sanctified, holy, dedicated to the word by the word of God. In life, Jesus saw the sacred and the ordinary and then the not so ordinary. Repentance and forgiveness and the very face of God was available to everyone, most especially to those who were called sinners. Jesus celebrated weddings and healed the sick and raised the dead and cast out that which afflicted the very soul. His work was that of restoring humanity to the fullness of life and in relationship with God. In death, Jesus gathered us all to himself. All that was broken and bruised and sinful, and he left it in the grave. In his resurrection, he rose to new life so that we could be restored to new life through him. Jesus returns to heaven changed by his human life, bearing the scars of the nails and the sword, bringing with him the beauty and the brokenness of the human condition. Jesus' ascension is his returning to God, bringing us through his life experience on earth, with him. It is proved that the one that sits in judgment has been with us and knows us. He was on this earth to bring us into a right relationship with God, making us sons and daughters of God, friends of Jesus. Jesus returned to heaven is a sign that the mission has been given to the disciples. They have been chosen to go on with living fully and lovingly. They have been sent to go and proclaim the love of God. John Powell writes in his book, Fully Human, Fully Alive. God was in Jesus, loving others, forgiving them, encouraging them, challenging them all the way to greatness, peace, and fullness of life. 
each one of the 11 standing there with Jesus that day, experienced all of that through Jesus. And so now they are sent into the, all the world so that everyone will know the love of God, the God of repentance and forgiveness. The ascension is Jesus' goodbye to his disciples. But as with many goodbyes, there is a knowledge that one will see them in the future, a see you later, if you will. We do have the knowledge that we are citizens of this earth and citizens of the kingdom of God, and we will see Jesus again. He has promised that he will return as Luke continues the ascension story in Acts. He writes, when he said this, that the disciples will be his witnesses to the ends of the world, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you, from you to, into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So the ascension is about Jesus returning to God, but it is more about us that Jesus opens our hearts to the word of God and transforms our lives. And because we have been forgiven of our sin through the atonement made on the cross, we are sent to preach the good news of forgiveness and grace. We have been sanctified by the gift of the Holy Spirit that was promised to the disciples. These were 11 very ordinary common men fishermen, tax collectors, not academicians, scholars, lawyers, rabbis, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, the elite. Eleven men who, because they were witness to the love and face of God on earth, forever changed the world, one person at a time, one healing touch at a time one time reaching across barriers that separate, breaking barriers that separate, preaching the word to anyone hungry to be fed by it, one at a time. We are those witnesses that have been sent by Jesus. We are few, but we still have the gospel to tell. We are reminded this day that we are called to share the good news of Jesus Christ to the ends of the world. There isn't a maximum number required to get the word out. Too many times we count success by numbers, by a full house, by a number on a spreadsheet. I think God counts success one by one. Each one matters. Each one is important. And one never knows how many more are behind that one person. I am sure the disciples never imagined the effects their missionary work manifested. Do you think Peter would really be blown away by the majestic, beautiful basilica built in his honor? That millions of Christians would make a pilgrimage to stand in the court ground of this holy monument? I am thinking that Peter was thinking about his Roman church and spreading the gospel in Rome. But with God, Paul says, all things are possible. And so it is with us as well. Our witness is not done. We still have work to do. We have a savior that loves us unconditionally and calls us into a relationship with him and his father. He has gifted us with the Holy Spirit to guide us and empower us. There are a whole bunch of people that are hurting, disenfranchised, lost, unloved, and without hope. We are called by Jesus to heal them, bring them into community of the beloved, find them, love them, and give them hope through forgiveness and repentance. In the Christian book of why, I happened to look up the question, why do Christians celebrate Ascension Day? It gives the spiel about Jesus gathering the disciples and ascending to heaven. The second paragraph says this, 
The importance of Ascension Day varies within Christendom. It is not a popular festiv festival among most Protestant churches. In fact, it is almost forgotten in most denominations. The last day that Christ spends with his disciples, he opens up the scriptures, sending them into the world to preach the good news and blessing them as he ascends to take his seat with his Father in heaven. I would say that's something to celebrate. In fact, that is exactly how Luke finishes the Gospel of Luke. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The New Interpreter's Bible Commentary on Luke ends its reflection on this passage this way. The final words of the gospel lead us to an appropriate response to the gospel of the one who saves, sends, and blesses us. The disciples received Jesus' blessing with great joy. They worshiped him and praised God. And they began immediately to do what he had instructed them to do. Here is the completion of the gospel drama, the narration of what God has done for us, the challenge of Jesus' teaching, and the models of those who made a faithful and joyous response. Joy is a natural byproduct of blessing. May it always be God's gift to those who study God's word, and seek God's kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son who showed us how much you loved us. Through his death and resurrection, we too are raised to a new life, a new creation. He has ascended to be seated at your right hand, but ever and always near us. Send us out into the world preaching repentance and forgiveness. Find your word in our hearts and help us to be transformed so that we can transform the world with love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Let us stand and sing our hymn of prayer. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire. Number 492 in your hymnal or on the screen. may be seated. Today we celebrate another day, uh, Mother's Day. Mother's Day doesn't just celebrate a person, but specifically a relationship. We all know that relationships are complicated as well as easy, joyous as well as grievous. We tend to make this day a hallmark day 
card day celebration. When it is a day of honoring all those who have nurtured us, guided us, loved us, forgiven us. And to remember that we are children of a God who creates, sustains, redeems, and loves us. I found this um, litany for Mother's Day that kind of expresses all um, the whole relationship of motherhood. And so I would like to lead us in that together. To you who have nurtured us, who have struggled so that we might live and flourish in the world, to you who have cared for our bodies and souls, who have given of yourself to make our futures possible, to you, our mothers who birthed us, to you, our mothers who adopted us as your own, to you, our mothers by choice, who by your embodied actions have cared for all who came into your life. We, see you. we honor you. May God's rich love surround you this day. To you who know the pain of longing, who longed to birth life but found it was imp an impossibility, who desire to be called mother but have never known that name, who long for the coming of a child who has chosen a pathway of pain, who ache over the absence of a mother who was or is unable to love you as you are, who yearn for the day when you will see your mother again, whether you are separated now by death or a broken relationship. We see you, we honor you, may God's love love hold you this day. To you who have lost, to you who have lost children, whether before they were born, before they were able to become into the world, whether your child left this earth too soon, or whether the loss is fraught with the ache of absence in the midst of their still being here on this earth. We see you, we honor you. May God's rich love comfort you this day. To you, our mothers, our aunts, our neighbors, our grandmothers, our teachers, our leaders, our healers, our friends. To you who fight and nurture, who love and pray, to your beauty, your complexity, to your vulnerability and your power, to your belovedness as one made in God's image. In the midst of our pain and brokenness, longing for your joy and healing and wholeness, we see you, we honor you. May God's rich love be yours this day. To the mothers whose children are unjustly harmed, oppressed, imprisoned, or deny dignity as one of God's own. To mothers who nurture peace and the conditions for flourishing life around the world. To mothers whose children never return from war. To mothers who face death to secure their children's safe passage and food. To the immigrant, the widow, the refugee. To women who have faced impossible decisions and been looked upon with disdain and scorn to those who fight for our rights, to those who give their lives trying to make the world a better place for future generations, to those who feel alone and unseen. We see you, we honor you, may God's rich love surround you and uphold you this day. And to you, O oh God and mother of us all, to you, the one who fashioned all humanity in your image, to you, the God who bears us, who births us with your love. To you, the God who teaches us to walk, who feeds us and leads us with kindness. To you, O oh God, who protects us with the fierceness of a mama bear. To you, the God who cares for us like a mother eagle or hen, who gathers us and spreads your wings lest we should fall. To you, the God of all comfort, to you, O oh God, who remembers us as a mother does a nursing child. To you, the God who labors to birth more of your justice and love and kingdom in this world. To you, the God who has searched for us as a woman who searches for a lost coin. To you who rejoices when you find us 
and we find you as you whisper to us, you have had us since the beginning of time. Welcome home, beloved. Amen. All right, let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day, for the glory of your creation, the blue skies, the birds that sing to announce the breaking of the dawn. Lord, we thank you for this day of remembering your returning to heaven to be with the Father, knowing that you will come again and that you have never really left us. We pray this day for all our mothers who are with you, for our loss and, and the pain that comes with the relationship of love. Lord, we are grateful to have had them in our lives for the lessons that they have taught us, for the forgiveness they have given us, for the love that we continue to share through our own lives. Lord, we pray this day for the, our pastor, Heidi, that she um, is having a restful time being with family. Lord, we pray for all those that are in harm's way, especially in Gaza and in Ukraine and Haiti and all the places where your children are in danger and at the mercy of violence and destruction. We pray for this world, for this nation, for the leaders of this nation, that they would find ways to work in unison with each other for the dignity and the rights of its citizens, that they would be led by your spirit of justice and mercy and peace. Lord, we lift up all of our silent prayers that we offer you this day, that you know by listening to our hearts. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our collection plate for offerings is available in the back of the sanctuary. And uh, please hear a prayer to ask their blessings, Lord's blessing on them. As we bring this offering, O Lord, we acknowledge our dependence upon you. We thank you for all your mercies and pledge ourselves to be stewards of all that you have entrusted to us. Amen.
I want to remind all the women here that there are flowers in the back of the sanctuary. Please take one home with you. We have been saved. We have been sanctified. And now we are being sent from here to go to preach the gospel of love, the gospel of Jesus Christ who has forgiven our sins and loves us and sustains us. Go forth into the world rejoicing in his spirit. Amen. Amen.